Sophia Jones here again and this is the third in my series of TED Talks about all things to do with music and the harp. And today I'm actually on the floor with my friend Ted over there um, to uh, talk to you about this amazing instrument which is my Ecuadorian harp. So back in 2008 Phil and I were on holiday in Ecuador and we were walking around the streets of Quito and I found this instrument at the back of a junk shop and I was immediately aware that it isn't quite the same as the Paraguayan harp which we're all much more familiar with but I didn't really know much about the traditional harp playing in Ecuador but anyway I fell in love with it because it's so sweet and I brought it and took it back to the UK and then when I came home I managed to do some research so we know now that the harp was taken to South America by the Jesuits in the 16th century and they taught the Kachean Indians how to play various instruments actually but the harp became one of the most popular ones and it was used in churches for religious music right up until the 19th century. Now there were two types of harp in Ecuador, the Arpa Imbuvarena and the Harpa Folklorica and this is a Harpa Folklorica. And they used um, cedar and walnut and cinnamon timber to manufacture these harps. And around the back, it has nine separate staved sides to the back of the sound box. It has 33 strings. And interestingly, the top strings are made out of wire. And the bottom ones originally were made from sheep or dogs. Gut, don't tell Ted. Uh, but luckily, mine have been replaced with some kind of nylon, I'm glad to say. So um, the coloured carvings, I don't know whether you can see, but there's an Indian head stock at the top of a pillar, and there's a beautiful curved bird's head here, and there's a floral and leaf decoration, and they are what distinguishes it as an arpa folklorica. And the arpa folkloricas were played by the Spanish-speaking peoples of the Andes, and um, they played all types of Ecuadorian folk music, as opposed to the Arpa Imba Borena, uh, which was played by the Quechuan-speaking Indians, and they played more their indigenous dance music on them. So this instrument is played pretty well horizontally, and the reason I'm on the ground is because they did play it at this sort of an angle, which I find really uncomfortable um, and quite remarkable, but that is how they played it. And there were various tunings, it's too complicated to go into all the tunings, but basically the left hand played variations of triads and the right hand played melodies, although in terms of the hands there were lots of variations and many players played the other way around on the same harps. And they were played during weddings and also particularly during children's wakes. And sometimes they were paid with food, even guinea pigs, which I know would upset an awful lot of harpists, I know, if anybody suggested paying you with a guinea pig, dead one I mean. So they had very wide sound boxes and one of the reasons for that is because they were often accompanied with a gompador and he would sing and also he would drum on the top of the soundboard while the harper was actually playing, so that must have been a tad um, off-putting. And they had a wonderful custom of stroking the strings with nettles and also with uh, blowing smoke through the strings to drive away bad spirits, which was a lovely shamanistic custom, and would also calm a nervous performer to be made to feel that everything was all right. Now, unfortunately, I can't play this little harp. I don't think it would survive if I retuned it, tuned the strings up properly. So as a dedication, I found a traditional Ecuadorian tune called Cascaron, and I arranged that for conventional lever harp or Celtic harp and I've made a video of that piece with photos of beautiful Ecuador and if you want to play this piece you can download the music or buy the book from the Cornwall Harp Centre shop and there'll be a link at the end of this video so I hope you enjoy this video of Cascaron. The word Cascaron refers to Easter eggs, there's a custom in South America of at Easter time blowing hen's eggs and filling them with little toys for children and then painting the outside of the egg very similar to our Easter customs. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, for some of my other videos and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.